everyone. This is step two of solving our cube. Our goal at this stage is to now fill in the corners in this up layer. So what we want to do is we want to fill in each of these four corners. This corner, it's got to be the blue, red, white corner. Just happens to be there already. I just need to twist it and so on around. This should be the blue, white, orange corner. So we have to go and find that and then bring it up. They seem to, all the corners seem to be up there. Okay, there it is. There's the blue, orange, white corner. It needs to go up there. So we'll scan around and do that and bring all the corners up to their proper locations. And our goal is then to make it look like this. Getting all of these little T's on the side and having that top layer all blue. So the way I like to think of doing these corners is I like to think of there being elevators. So this particular corner piece, I can move something up there using two, one of two elevators. I can use this elevator. You know, if I want to bring something up there, I maybe I want to bring this piece up there. I can bring an elevator down, slide that piece into the elevator, and bring it up. Now I'll undo that. Or I could use this elevator to bring stuff up. So if I wanted to bring this one up there, I'd have to bring the elevator down, load it in, and then send the elevator up. And I'll undo that as well. So I like to think of there being two elevators. The only thing to remember is that when you're getting on the elevator, when you want to get on the elevator, so I bring this down, I better not be here or here to try to get on the elevator because those parts move. If I want to get on the on this elevator, I better be waiting either here or here, waiting off of the elevator. Similarly, if I want to get on this elevator, get on that location, so there, so I want to bring it down and load myself up into there, then I better not be on this elevator. I better be hiding either over here or here. So those are the only things we need to keep in mind when thinking about this elevator analogy. All right, so let's go ahead and put some pieces in place. So let's go with this piece. It's the blue, white, orange piece. It needs to go up here. Which elevator am I going to ride? Well, the way I pick the elevator is I look at the blue face and I say I need that blue face to go on top. So I need that blue face to go on top, which means whichever elevator comes down better put that red sticker where the blue one currently is. And there's only one elevator that'll do that. It's this one. That puts the red sticker where the blue one is. So that's the elevator I want to ride. And let's see why that's the case. So I don't want to stand on the elevator. I don't want to stand underneath it when it's coming down. So I move myself off to the side. Now I'm hiding over here. I bring the elevator down. I load myself into it. That's where I made a note of the blue sticker was on that side. That's why I use this elevator, because when I bring it across, now the blue sticker is matching that blue edge sticker, which was from the top. So when I bring it back up, I'm now up top. That corner is now correctly placed. So let's go ahead around and see if we can do some other ones. Maybe we'll go with, to work on this one, which is in the proper location. It's just not in the proper orientation. So what I need to do is I need to bring it down using one elevator, hide it, and then pick it up using the other, uh, other elevator. How do I know which one to bring it down with? Well, I'd really like the blue sticker to stay on one of the sides. That's the only way I'm going to be able to get it up top again with one of those elevators. So let's see what I mean by that. I'm going to keep it on the side. So I'm going to use this elevator to bring it down. I need to get off that elevator. I can't hide here because that's still on it. I'm going to hide all the way in the back corner, way back here. Now that elevator comes back up to make sure that edge piece is restored. I always want, if I'm going to move an edge piece that's already been placed, I want to restore it as quickly as I can. Now I bring the other, other elevator down. And remember, my piece that wants to get on it is hiding back here. So I swing it all the way around and load them up. And the choice of doing the front elevator to bring the piece down and the side elevator to pick them up with resulted in the blue sticker being in the right spot. If I did it using the opposite order of the elevators, the blue sticker would be in the wrong spot. And so now it's up top. And so we've got two edges placed. Let's keep looking around. So there's 
the blue, orange, yellow one. It needs to go blue, orange, yellow. It needs to go there. So I need to bring it downstairs using one elevator and then try to get it up over here using some other elevators. I want to keep the blue sticker on the side. That's the only way I'm going to get it back on top. And the reason is if I bring it down using this one and put the blue sticker on the bottom, there's no way to get the blue sticker on top using either of the elevators. The only way the blue sticker will get up on top is, well, look at where the yellow sticker goes. The yellow sticker is either on this side or the yellow sticker is on this side. There's no face twist that's going to bring that corner piece down and put the yellow sticker on the bottom. So I better make sure if I'm going to do the opposite and try to bring this piece up with the blue sticker on top, the blue better be on the side. So just a, perhaps an over explanation of this, but it is important. If your blue sticker is on the side, keep it on the side because that's the only way you'll get it up top in a few moves. So I'm keeping it on the side. I'm going to get it off that elevator, send that elevator back up so that edge piece is restored. That brought that corner piece down here. Now I'll swing it around underneath where I want it to go. It's the blue, orange, yellow one. It needs to go up here. The blue's in a perfect spot to be sent up top as long as I choose the right elevator. Which elevator am I going to choose? Well, that yellow sticker will occupy the place where the blue sticker is as long as I twist this face. So that's the elevator I'm going to use. So I stand off of the elevator, bring it down, load myself into the elevator, head back up, and now that one's done. So we've got our three corners done. Let's go ahead and work on the last corner. We've got to scan around. Oh, here's a situation where our corner piece, the color blue, is on the bottom. I need to get it up to the top. So I can't do that with just using either one of these two elevators. I need that blue to be on the side. I need it to be on this side if I want to use that elevator to pick it up, or I need it to be on this side if I want this elevator to pick it up. Right now it's on the bottom. So what do I do? Well, I do what I'd never recommend anyone do, and that is stand underneath the elevator when it's coming down. So this guy stands underneath, and I'll use either elevator, and I will squish them. They've been sent over here now, but with the benefit that the blue sticker is now on the side. So stand under the elevator and squish it. And now move off it. So I'm going to move off it by, well, I can come around this way. So move off the elevator, coming around here, and then send that elevator up. And now I'll just bring it underneath where I want it to go. Now it's been twisted. It's got the blue on the side. I want to send the blue up top, so I'm going to use this elevator to pick it up with. And there we go. We've got our corners all solved. The next step, we'll go with those middle layer edges, those three middle layer edges. It's at this stage, though, in steps three, four, and five, that we're going to have to start applying move sequences that move as few pieces as possible. So this is where the work starts to come in. And this is where perhaps you may argue that there's a bit of memorization. Um, the move sequences that I'll show you, I'll try to illustrate why I chose them and how each puzzle move is essential in that move sequence and perhaps you'll be able to start seeing then how to modify those move sequences and make them your own. So again it's at this stage where things start to become a little more troublesome because we don't want to mess all the work we've done up so far.